All right, welcome to the final video of this short little series here, introducing you to using Binary Ninja and Time Travel Debug. Uh, as a refresher here, we went through went through the documentation, right? And so we installed WinDebug, not automatically, but manually, because we're using the free version. Um, we recorded a trace using both Binary Ninja and then just directly in the command line, but Binary Ninja shows us what that command line it actually ran was, so really kind of the same thing. And then uh, we were, now we're gonna load the trace so that you can go ahead and debug it. And then that'll be up to you, um, you know, to, to hopefully leverage this for all of your, or well, for a lot of your reversing needs. I think you'll find, I know I personally have found that using these traces and just simply the ability to go back and forth in the execution has really been a beneficial thing. I don't have to restart my live debug sessions over all the time. Um, okay, so let's just jump right into it here. Uh, I've got Binary Ninja open. We've got, uh, and first things first, we got to load the file. So uh, yeah, I'm not actually really interested in reverse engineering ping, but we do need to have the file there because that is the underlying executable that we have the trace based off of. Uh, so double click that in my recent file, recent files, and we'll wait. Let uh, wait till Binary Ninja gets that loaded. Okay. Next step, we have debugger, and we need to go to debug adapter settings. And maybe a little hard to see with all this this dark screen, but uh, we have adapter type. You should now have DBG ENG, so debug engine TTD. We want to select that type, and now we set up our input file, which is ping. This is maybe a little bit of a misnomer, uh, but the executable path, this is actually the path to our trace. So we'll go to, not the out, remember the out file, very small file, that's just information from the capture. We want the run file. Uh, working directory, you can make that whatever you want. Uh, I'll just continue to use that same directory. And uh, I guess the command line arguments, right? So dash n15 and the cyberyeti.com and um, I'm not 100% sure if that's even needed. Yeah, it's not in the documentation here, and I wouldn't think since we're working with a trace rather than a live debug session that it would be needed. So uh, let's go ahead and just get rid of that. Okay, now we can click Accept and go back to our debug menu option and Launch. And this says, okay, you're about to launch, and it confirms that it is the run file. It may harm your machine. Well, we've already harmed the machine. So yes, we're ready to continue. And what we should see now is a little bit of work here for Binary Ninja, but um, we are at the entry point, W main CRT startup. So the address of entry, not necessarily main. Um, and most importantly, you should see up here in the corner, you have your normal forward debugging and your now you reverse debug. So really cool, we can step forward. There you go, there's the sub call add jump. And now we can go back, back to the add, back to the call, back to the sub. And you'll see all of the, you know, the state of memory is largely there for you to investigate. The registers are there for you to investigate. Um, now, you may be thinking, well, this is pretty cool. Hopefully you're thinking this is pretty cool. What are the limitations? And there certainly are some. I've run into some problems with creating traces. Um, you're only getting one path, right? When the program ran, uh, you got one path of execution and you can't change that. So for example, if you came to a conditional jump here, you wanted to go the other direction, the trace went the opposite direction. You can't, you can't switch the bits or fop the flags and, and go a different direction. Like you're stuck with the trace and the emulation and, and what was recorded at the time. If you want to do that, you'll have to do some modifications to the original binary, record another trace, or maybe revert to a live debug session. Um, but I think you'll find this to be quite helpful. Um, I'll link in the video, there is a really great article that talks about next step, kind of cool stuff. I think code coverage is definitely a cool step and in which they go through and extract code coverage from the trace file because the trace file contains all of the addresses amongst other information, the addresses that were executed. And then they use a plugin to highlight the actual um, code coverage, actually the execution path. Uh, but that requires plugins and plugins just aren't supported in the free version. So uh, I typically don't do a lot of content where, um, at least not on the like the public free part of my YouTube channel, 
uh, where you have to have uh, purchased software or licenses. So anyways, um, I'll link that article here in the, the description. Definitely check it out. It's a great read. It's going to cover what we already did and then give you some ideas for what else you can do with TTT. But um, hopefully you enjoy. If you have any questions, comments, um, really cool ways in which you're using TTT, I'd love to hear about it. Please drop me a note in the comments. Uh, otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope you will check out more videos on the channel. Talk to you all in the future. Thanks for tuning in.